talking about Monetizer with Andres, co-founder and CEO. Um, Andres, well, can you tell us about yourself? Oh, yes, uh, definitely. Uh, I'm a gamer myself. I'm a startup enthusiast, and I love solving the large, large problems. And, and uh, I, uh, I personally saw a big problem with, in, in mobile gaming, and especially for game developers, with monetization. And uh, this, is, this is my passion for uh, started two years ago and then non, non-stopping since. What is Monetizer? Uh, Monetizer is my company. <laughs> I co-founded with my buddies, Rainus and Martin, a good friend of mine. Uh, Monetizer is a game reward engine. Uh, mm-hmm. We help game developers to monetize their players. Uh, we do that by rewarding gamers for their time and skills as they play the video games uh, on mobile devices on our platforms and uh, to keep gamers engaged, to enhance their experience and reward with uh, uh, tokens that represent some um, actual meaningful value for them. Awesome. And um, when did you or your team come up with the idea? Uh, we played around with this idea for quite a long time. Uh, we, we had our own mobile apps before. Uh, we, we tried to monetize it through mm-hmm. obvious means of uh, in-app purchases or, or advertising. And it went up and down. And, and uh, by seeing the opportunities in in, uh, in crypto space, and, and we, we met a merchandising company, we uh, played around with multiple ideas, talked with many, many game developers, uh, around 500, I would I would say, or even more. And then we learned that our insights that we gathered uh, in previous uh, businesses are, are aligned, and we can help with game studios to, to build build the revenue. Awesome. And what was your aha moment? Oh, I, I think when you when you play this video game, mm-hmm. you. You're, you're fascinated by that. You, you have so much emotional experience, and then you, you like to share with your friends and buddies and see the leaderboards and whatnot. But once the game is is going to the end, that's it. Uh, we, we, we continued playing other games and realized that my, my previous gaming history is, isn't, is, is irrelevant at that point. And that, then we realized, wait a minute, this... This, this gaming uh, all history could be could be used for good, and I think game gamers uh, are playing a lot of games uh, on everyday basis from day to day to month to month, but they have not connected the gaming profile. So mm-hmm. uh, this is what realized that help us to, to to connect and move on with what we are doing right now, and this is sort of this. Uh, a vision towards where we are steering with the company mm-hmm. to connect uh, the reward first of all gamers for their experience and second is to connect these uh, one game to another uh, and then and convert these emotional experiences into something more more mean, meaningful more tangible mm-hmm. so tell us about your vision oh as, as, as I mentioned I, I think this is where where the gaming could go, where where uh, digital goods can be transformed into the, to the physical goods. Uh, if a gamer plays a game, spends an hour of his uh, of his life of playing a game he really really loves, mm-hmm. I think that has has to be rewarded, and and uh, gamers will appreciate very much that. Uh, I'm a gamer myself. I love playing video games. I don't like being interrupted. Mm-hmm. I'd rather be rewarded, and and many gamers like myself would would say, yeah, that's that's a really really nice uh, experience that I love, and and I, I love to share with my friends, and this is this is what help will help game developers to build better games. Mm-hmm. These insights, what 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 motivates, what drives gamers to play more. Uh, I, I think that's a really really good value, not only for gamers, but only to developers, but. Uh, connecting all the industry together. So, um, tell us about the team. You know, who are the co-founders? Um, who is the main team? You know, who built the company, and what what does your team look like? Oh yes, so we have wonderful uh, co-founders, and then uh, 
team members from from Latvia and, and from abroad. So so myself and my co-founders, Rennes and Martins, we were born and raised in Latvia, the northern part of Europe. Uh, we decided to move to the United States, uh, uh, where 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 the company is now based. Uh, and um, all, all all my team has uh, experience in app development. We've been in uh, developing games. Uh, we've been active in, in the developer communities. As we spoke, speak more individually, uh, myself, I worked at advertising agency, Omnicom Media Group, for a while. Uh, my, my CTO, Reynes, uh, he built a peer-to-peer crypto payment platform uh, four years ago, even even before it was a thing. Uh, my <laughs> other co-founder, Martin, <laughs> yeah, uh, my, uh, Martin uh, is a product expert. He loves driving uh, and then like, make make sure that customers smile every time they yeah, receive an email. Uh, then we have uh, executives from from uh, ex Barracuda members, Mary Catherine. She's a marketing person. Uh, Chris, you know Chris. You met him as well. Mm-hmm. He's an amazing community manager. And then so, so like people who know or have been uh, uh, experts in, in in what they do, and they really really love what they do. This is what we try to build the team. Um, who have aligning one vision and are, are perfectionists in, in what they do. Yeah, um, sounds like you're describing animals, and I, I love um, having animals on, on teams as well because there's a sense of passion <laughs> that you don't, you don't get, you know, and um, yeah, and I, I see that in the individual. It's, it's very different. <laughs> Oh, definitely. I, 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 we have to, I think, uh, ourselves compared to, to some some uh, animals, and at the same time, a team uh, itself as a company has to be uh, a very fast animal, <laughs> agile, adaptive, and, and at the same time with a large ears, uh, yeah. who listen to the market and adapts it, and then it makes sure, first of all, to drive value for everyone who's who's participating. Yeah, and, and the only reason I, I mention animal is because it's it comes from Paul Graham, right? And you know, um, I don't know. I, I used to close a lot of deals really fast, and you know, um, I'm I'm kind of like an animal in that sense, you know. But what is what is wrong with me? <laughs> why why were I able to do that? And and is there a cap to that? You know, so. So, but, you know, then I found out that I belong to Startup Life really, really well because, you know, um, you could do a lot of things and you're passionate about it. And so Paul Graham described what an animal is in the startup environment really well. You know, I have worked with salespeople, you know, and they they sell <laughs> all day, you know, so they're animals in their selling, you know. Um, and then I've met other people describe in social media as so, oh she, you know she's like a an animal in social media you know <laughs> and so you know I mean that term is more of a positive term I think it describes a oh, lot yeah. of the person's passion um, than anything else and you know sometimes as a founder and CEO you know um, you want you want animals you wanted to hire animals you know because passion and the work drive them. Oh, definitely. I 100% agree with you. If if you love what you do and you drive value and everyone uh, that you're serving agrees with that, uh, that's that's what motivates to wake you know, wake up every morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just just you know, it's it's awesome. And what is the problem that you're trying to solve? Uh, so I, I think we, we can look from two perspectives. Uh, one perspective is gamer, mm-hmm. and another perspective is the game developer. Um, let's let's touch upon the first one, the gamer. Uh, I, I a little bit talked about that. I, I, the real problem that maybe it's not uh, talked about a lot is is just that all these um, two billion gamers who spend like forty billion dollars on digital currencies, um, every hour of the uh, gameplay mm-hmm. or, or money spent uh, is is has no real life value. Uh, yes, it, it drives more uh, uh, digital digital enhancements to the game. Mm-hmm. You have much better power 
much more more skills. Uh, but that, at the end of the day, once you're done with your game, it doesn't have any uh, tangible value. I think this is uh, this is this is what is not in the industry yet, and and this experience has to be rewarded. Uh, and we think that uh, through through rewarding for the time and skill, that's a, that's a really really valuable. Uh, play for a gamer in the long term. Yeah. And for the game studios, uh, uh, there are obviously making money. <laughs> this is one really, really uh, business sustainable problem that they're, that they're trying to solve every day. But in addition to that, they're looking at retention, lifetime value of the players, and, and making amazing experience. Game developers really, they, they are in, into this because they love building games. And they want to make amazing experiences. Um, so by, by rewarding every hour of play, as we are trying to do it, uh, that that helps game studios to make much builder, much better products, and then collect insights to know what motivates me, what motivates you, uh, what that kind of animal are you in this game or another, <laughs> and and, and uh, what what helps to drive the. the, the single economic units for, for every single individual inside games and connect those. So monetizer helps uh, these game developers to increase the retention by adding incentives and by driving revenue. Okay. And um, how does how does a platform work? Like if I'm if I have a gaming company, how do I work with you guys to monetize? Oh yeah, it's, uh, just just hit me up on email and I'll talk about that. But pra on practical practicality, it's uh, a simple plugin that the uh, game studios adds to the game. Uh, we look at uh, um, emotional incentives throughout the gameplay. What what will help the gamer to keep playing longer? We look at the drop off rates and, and, and purchases. How to how to drive gamer to put some emotional incentives behind them, um, leadership or social elements or, or belonging, some, some scarcity. We look at those various emotional um, elements that will help to drive the gamer to play more. So we add these incentives along the gameplay, mm -hmm. and as the gamer plays, he collects these incentives or unlocks or has these opportunity to collect uh, uh, tokens and as the, as, as the gamer collects them, he can transact or collect this uh, crypto wallet inside the game. So as he collects NTZ tokens, uh, um, he can do the transaction with without leaving the game. Um, initially, he will not have any uh, learnings. He will know that he collected enough coins. He can exchange those coins to, for example, game-related T-shirts. And be proud of that because it's with his own high score, and and we will make sure that the shirt is delivered to his door. And is there a beta version for your platform? Oh yes, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, there are 25 beta versions. Uh, 25 game studios who are using our solution have games out there. Okay. Uh, if you're a puzzle fan, uh, I would recommend one of our friends, uh, 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 Ryan, who developed a game called Black Box. Uh, blackboxpuzzle.com definitely go there for iPhone devices it's an amazing experience um, then if you like skiing I don't know if it's a season there but the integration with slopes was amazing uh, you can go down the hill earn coins collect them and compete with your friends and then once you collect the points you have these opportunities to unlock exclusive game related uh, physical products Mm -hmm. And then some other ones. You can you can find them on our website. Awesome. And who is your target audience? Um, uh, game developers, definitely, definitely game developers. So we are working with them every day and night. We're uh -huh. listening, uh, guys. If you're listening right now, <laughs> hit me up. I would love to hear your feedback about our product. So. My goal is to collect the feedback from them, uh, see what are their business challenges on an everyday basis, and try to solve one by one. And how about um, your competitors? Like, who are your competitors out there? I would say that we are more competing for attention. Uh, 
there are so many uh, advertising SDKs that game developers are adding, some notificational SDKs or, 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 or e-commerce SDKs. Uh, it's more about which plugin or solution is a partner rather than 2% uh, enhancement to the experience. Uh, so, so attention, I would say, is the most uh, um, most fragile asset that we have together with time. Okay. And um, so, Andrews, I, I've, you know, met you um, just, like, you know, three days or a couple days ago um, at Capitalism 2050 um, doing Coachella. And, you know, we had dinner last night and you were telling about, you know, your story about how you were driving a boat, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> so, you know, I wanted to just shift a little bit to, you know, how you became an entrepreneur and what you did before and what brings you here to this company. Oh, oh definitely. So uh, uh, for the guys who don't know the story, so I have ship's master's degree. Uh, I have traveled around the world on board a ship. I could literally take a wheel and and get you all guys on, on a large, large ship and carry you all around uh, the globe. Uh, so I, I studied for that and, and for a couple of years. And, and once I was traveling abroad, I saw so many people. Mm -hmm. And I was so inspired when I first went to United States. And I saw, uh, uh, I was in a Times Square. I saw so many billboards. And I, wa I was wondering, wow, how many people are competing for attention? And they're building so new many things. At that one, at that one, it was like um, 13 years ago or something. Mm -hmm. um, startups wasn't a thing back at home in Latvia. Mm -hmm. Yes, there were a lot of successful entrepreneurs, and 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 I always wanted to uh, see how it is uh, to be there in this market, to be one of that brands, to build something that people see on the streets, and and. Um, that drives me to launch my own business, to quit my diploma, what I earned, uh, earned and studied for many years, and shift towards um, uh, building my own company, uh, being my own boss, but at the same time being a boss from all of my customers and, and driving much, much bigger value uh, to the world rather than working for someone without maybe some everyday meaning uh, nine to five jobs. So that that motivated me to, to quit what I do and then move on to what I'm doing now. So, you know, of course, um, you're doing your blockchain crypto company and you're, you know, I met you at the crypto conference where you spoke um, about crypto and blockchain. And from speaking with you, I understand that, you know, you are having a sec offering security tokens for your token sale um, or token generation event. So tell us a little bit about why you choose to conduct security tokens versus utility tokens. Oh, thank you. It's a great question. Thank you for uh, noticing that moment. As, as you know, uh, maybe now it's shifting to towards uh, security tokens in the market. And uh, there have been a lot of utility token offerings last year and early this year, and, and more in the market. There's more questions asked about what it is, what, 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 how does it compare, and, and how people can, com partic uh, per can participate in it. So uh, to, to distinguish utility tokens is uh, something that you can access a product or service for the company. Uh, and security is more like investment uh, into the company and company's token. Uh, we are launching a dual token, which is uh, both security and utility. Um, uh, security allows us to um, uh, get investment from accredited investors from United States and abroad. So we are trying to follow all the SEC regulations and recommendations. And I would recommend to do any business who's considering token sale offering to double check, maybe a little overspend on your attorneys, but make sure that you are legally compliant with all the rules. 
uh, you can head out to maybe our blog where we are sharing our experience. Uh, blog that, uh, blog that monetizer io, and then we are sharing all the baby details, what not, what versus when, and and then some other legal questions. Uh, make make sure yet that you're following all the rules there, uh, because at the end of the day, you're building some value to the customers, and your company has to be legally structured to do to do so. So that's very very important. Um, so how we are different to answer your question uh, from utility token, uh, security token offers investors to participate in the in investment of the company and have the long term play within the company. And security tokens, as you know, are exchangeable and will be exchangeable in security token exchanges. Uh, utility token, on the other hand, is something that people like to exchange on utility exchanges whenever it's possible and when, whenever the product is there, whenever the utility is there. In our case, uh, uh, utility, uh, our existing plugin will be updated with utility. Therefore, uh, we chose to do a utility a token release uh, uh, later on this year. So initially, investors can, accredited investors can, can participate. And once we release the product, Game developers and gamers will have access to utility token. And once we have proven that our business works, that all accredited investors and, and, and well-known VC firms have uh, done a due diligence on, on our company, and we are very strict and very transparent with these investors, that's a proof to the market that this business makes sense, this business drives value. And everyone from uh, gamer to game developers can participate and then use this utility and in these exchanges. So I think that's that's a hard way how to validate the company, what they are doing, and to prove to the market that uh, the company is doing uh, good. Thank you, Andreas. Um, you know, we have um, Dawn here as well. So I'm also putting her on air. She has a gaming uh, background. Um, prior and um, she's in um, we're in the same team so um, yeah like she might have some questions for you but um, awesome so, yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> hi Andreas hey how are you hi yeah I'm good so yeah I, I, I've just joined the studio so I'm kind of I, I didn't catch the whole conversation but yeah I've been working in games and especially you know from a games point of view, we look at progression systems for gamers as an incentive to, to get them in, get them hooked. But it's not just from that aspect. It's what what is what is your reward for your progression? Um, and I see a lot of this is emerging at the moment in the blockchain industry with how utility tokens are being used as well. Okay. Yes. <laughs> What's the question? I think she just has a, a comment about that. I mean, so okay. You okay. Can, I guess okay. I guess it could be a utility function as well, not just a security function. And I think the SEC is still um, trying to figure out what to do. And of course, none of us are giving investing or legal advice um, on the whole token sell process. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely agree about uh, having a utility inside the game. As you said, you, you're motivating. You, you have uh, ways how you identify where the gamers are, are are playing more or less, and you're trying to uh, solve this kind of a problem. You, you always want 100% of all loyal players who return to your game every day. Uh, so there has to be some gamification framework, uh, and, and you have to motivate those gamers from from accomplishments to to empowerment to other to other activities inside the game and uh, sometimes those lose a meaning like getting a diamond without uh, actual uh, value underneath it but if, if if you put some tangible things that will result in, in um, uh, monetary value for the gamer uh, then it's a little bit different uh, motivational system for everyone inside the game. Um, so, so you can keep them uh, motivated and use best practices of uh, behavioral design um, 
and 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 start figuring out how to figure out the drop off and drop offs and, and and how to motivate gamers even more. So let me ask you a question. Um, you know, I I understand gamification um, mainly because I worked at eBay, and um, you know, I, I feel like they're one of the you know the king of network effects. Um, with the rating system, you know, when the internet first came out, you know, and I think Facebook did that a lot with widgets um, when it first began. Of course, over time, the platform has changed. And, um, you know, our one of our and Jerry, um, who may be here later, I mean, he works at Autolysis, um, has, you know, that has an eight gamification frame, framework, um, possibly nine, but you know, since they have an oct- uh, octopus metaphor, we'll give it. We'll yeah, give him that, th- that, that, that framework that we use actually. Oh. I, it's amazing to mention that. Yuka Cho came up with this gamification framework, uh, and then we're using quite a lot, and and uh, they're they're doing amazing amazing job to put a a way how to analyze uh, uh, games across the market and how to analyze any specific activities from, from levels to uh, narrative of the story to accomplishments uh, and, and, and how to put um, all, all, the, all the game on um, one piece of paper, uh, just like Lean started that with uh, 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 Lean, lean uh, Canvas. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I've also read and, the and Lean this, this is what you can do that. Yeah, and and this is what you can do for, for the mobile games, and, and not only all all type of the games. Yeah, it's it's awesome. I've also read the the Lean Canvas, um, and it, you know I, I think one of the biggest thing I learned from that is it's the Lean Startup Book is you know is agile. You know we we change it, we change, and we basically go out in the fields and we talk to different people. You know we understand. You know what the problems are, you know, and you know we forget about books, we forget about staying in the office. So, you know, I feel like that's what we were doing in the blockchain space, and you know, sometimes we're not in the office, but we're actually going out. Um, but but I love the team at at Talk um, Talisus. Um, you know, Jerry is actually part of our has token team, and um, so let let let's. Let's ask you, how are you guys using blockchain in the monetizing process? Is it going to be used for the products or is it going to be, um, you know, with the games? Mm-hmm. How, how is oh, the token so used? All, yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> thank you for the follow-up question. Uh, so uh, we know uh, how the game is being uh, used uh-huh. and... We don't want to own the data that we collect or, or or learn throughout these incentives. We want to be very, very transparent with every game studio that we work with. Um, we want to help game, game studios by, by seeing uh, what drives the gamer mm-hmm. um, and, and then not owning the data, but, but knowing the insight. So we are more like a, a game insight company rather than data company. Uh, so therefore, uh, all the activities, how the gamer plays, when he's motivated, what are the triggers, how much he has spent, uh, what size, what size of a T-shirt did he collect, uh, select, uh, what payment methods did he use, uh, how quickly he did that, and all these kind of activities that help to see what was the transaction process, what was the gameplay process, who is the who's the gamer himself, what kind of a game types he likes, how long he plays. Uh-huh. This helps uh, build a better understanding. Uh, and once once the gamer uh, does the uh, exchange, uh, he can do that with uh, uh, on-chain uh, transaction. Uh, everything else is off-chain uh, in, in, in our case, just to speed up the process of, of writing uh, to blockchain. Um, therefore, these insights must be transparent. We don't own those uh, these data uh, data points, but we share insights from one game studio to another. And this is how uh, larger or smaller game studios would be able to share insights from 
one game to another to uh, build better experiences by combining them. Um, so this is how we're using uh, blockchain technology for decentralized way how to uh, learn about uh, uh, incentives that help, help build better games. Um, let me ask you about your tokenomics. Um, since you're doing a token generation event, um, so mm -hmm. how, I, I'm more interested not just in the numbers of your tokenomics, but the philosophy behind them. Mm -hmm. uh, so what, how we are uh, um, uh, making money, <laughs> or how the uh, game studios are making money, or are more? No, just just more of your, you know, every ICO. More, more of that. Yeah, every ICO or token sale has tokenomics, right? So how much money, how much uh, tokens they're issuing, you know, how they're distributed, um, how much, what, what percentage is given oh, to the okay. community, um, okay. you know, but, like, you know, usually each blockchain company disclose that on their website, and, you know, and it, it changes, and it's different, right? So, you know, but I, I strongly believe I'm more interested in hearing the story behind the tokenomics, you know, than the number themselves. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay, makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so as we have dual tokens, uh, it's, it's, uh, we'll be tokenizing apart from uh, company's equity into the token. Mm -hmm. So the story there is that investors who will participate, accredited investors who will participate in our round uh, will hold an equity piece of the company. And that's, that's like a long-term investment. We don't, we, we don't like like short-term relationships. We are building a long-term play and the goal with that is that everyone we get on board uh, tries to help what we do, tries to help with connections, uh, insights, their uh, uh, business experience, and, and whatnot, with every kind of a resources. So that's a long-term play for us and the investor. This is how we would drive the value for them. Uh, the other piece is utility token. And with utility token, we 51% uh, will be distributed to utility token holders, gamers, game studios, uh, investors, uh, and, and everyone else in the crypto space. 25% uh, of them will be uh, used by us to qualify game studios that we believe are the next best solutions. And we will give uh, monetizer tokens for free to these game studios. So these, they can um, leverage the situation and, and 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 motivate gamers. Uh, we will look at uh, Apple Design award-winning game studios to next new technologies to establish businesses to new new game indie developers. So everyone there will have an equal opportunity to participate and and together with us uh, build a loop, agile loop of, of product development, and so we can all build much better products for the ecosystem. Um, company and advisors uh, will have the rest of the token split from utility token pie. Sounds good. Um, Don, do you have any questions for? Sure. Um, so, Andre, it's just going back to what you were saying about game studios sharing insights with each other. I was interested in how that dynamic is working and how this like what the response is from the studios. So to take an example, if you took the Microsoft Xbox platform, you could say that Microsoft is gathering all these insights from games and players. But then if you look at each game is gathering its own data and it's protective over that data. It has a trust with Microsoft as a centralized source that they, they, they're going to be, um, they're going to, you know, obviously pay confidentiality to that data and not exploit it um, too much. But at the same time, you know, ga games themselves and game studios are, are protective over their data and how it can be used in other products. So, you know, like Microsoft doesn't go around sharing the data from one game with one studio to the next because of that. So I was just interested in how these developers are coming on board with this concept. What I think is a good analogy is a tragedy of commons here. Um, so, uh, Microsoft in this uh, play is competing with other platforms and, and um, they're always will be trying to outperform or 
outscale uh, other platforms uh, in terms of uh, deals, uh, licenses, and games and offerings. Uh, what what we think uh, what and, and what cryptocurrency and uh, blockchain can allow everyone in the space uh, to participate and have equal votes and, and equal insights about what they're doing. And every every participant in this ecosystem will be then will be able to use their assets or skills or, or knowledge to use these insights to to their best good. Sort of uh, always, these uh, large whales will uh, use the system for their advantage. But at the same time, all the indie developers will have the opportunity to uh, to learn from the best. Uh, as 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 gaming is being more more and more um, available and much easier to learn, uh, there are so many developers being out there trying to build their next big awesome idea, right? Uh, but they don't have this access uh, um, to, to to these learnings, uh, to insights, or more sometimes uh, knowledge. <laughs> this is what they're trying to uh, solve as immediate need. So we, as a business, we would focus initially on the smaller players to help these smaller players to bridge the gap. And once we show to the big players that, that that's this, this power of smaller players uh, can help uh, to move the industry further, I think that will change the strategy for the bigger businesses who are out there for many years. It, it's quite difficult to... Uh, to, to compete with the whales, if, if you compete like in the small developer to the uh, platform itself, but I think this technology will allow to, to, to um, be more fair in the ecosystem. Sure, it's definitely a leap of faith. So I think you're approaching it from the right um, place, where the smaller players don't really have anything to be protective of yet, but they they have so much to gain. Um, but once you have a high concentration of all these you know you know studios in the space um then you have your proof of concept that can bring in the bigger players um so i think you know you're talking about the gamification analogies and using that analysis um and then i think you know i think it's it's good that to use the analysis because it's been gathered from all these different you know games that have gone out there and do done things and social media sites but the way I look at it as well is not necessarily when these games were going out did they have this analysis to build what they built. A lot of it was just built on instinct and just really tapping into what is going to engage you know, players the most. So I almost think sometimes it's good just to go with your instincts and then use the analysis as a sanity check as well to say like, okay, well now there's these gaps because it can be quite um, difficult to find the inspiration in a design if you're approaching it from an, uh, an analytical place in the first place. Oh, I, I totally agree with you. And uh, uh, what, what uh, Nintendo did uh, by launching uh, their, their new product out there, uh, they're bridging the gap of, 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 of when the gamer wants to play the game, if he wants to do that on mobile device. Here you go. If it's on the PC, here you go. You're mentioning a good point that uh, that gamer wants to play a game wherever he wants, and there ha have there have there, there today there are boundaries. If you if we talk about platforms, you're playing platforms. If you play mobile, you play mobile. Uh, this experience or your history is not connected between games. And, and, and platforms even further. So I think that could change, and this will be very powerful when it's, the, when it's done. I completely agree with you. It's um, very fragmented, and I know like the system you're building is rewarding the player with crypto, um, which as a replacement for you know like your usual virtual economy that you would get in a game. Um, but yeah, it's very important to realize, you know, like a lot of what you've put in, um, you, you, wanna, you want recognition and you want achievements. So if you look at the achievements system, say on Microsoft, Xbox, 
it rewards you for what you put in on every game. So it is, it is a centralized system and then you, as you say you go and play on another platform and that information gets lost. But if you can imagine a system like the achievements a system on Xbox, but it recognizes across the blockchain every interaction that you've had on every game and it's building everything and you know giving you that kudos, um, then that's a very powerful system. Thank you. Thank you for supporting here. <laughs> <laughs> so, Andreas, um, what is one advice you would like to provide to the larger community? Uh, I, I think build something that people love, uh, that, that enhances their experience and people enjoying building that. And then um, if people wanted to learn more about Monetizer without the E at the end, um, I think it's M O N E T I Z R. Um, where do they go? The R. Yeah. Where, uh, where just, do they go? Just like as you mentioned, monetizer. Yep. Dot io. It's it's our website. Uh, if if you want to learn more about our token sale, about our company, about ourselves, uh, go to the website. Uh, you'll find the links to our Telegram channel. Feel free to ask any challenging questions. We're happy to help and uh, happy to learn and, and then happy to work with game developers who's, who are, wants to build next big games. We'd love, love to hear from you. All right, we have a few minutes. Dylan, do you have any questions still? Uh, awesome. Well, if, if, I, if I have a still a last moment, uh, I want to say thanks for the opportunity, guys, to speak about gaming. Uh, I, I still believe that Gamers out there are not not saying that they're gamers. They're, they're secretly playing uh, in, in, in the basements at, at homes while they're tra commuting. And, and uh, everyone out there, cheers from me, <laughs> from my company, and thank you for listening. And, and, and hope hope we can accomplish much much bigger uh, accomplishments and a goal together. Yeah, I, I think I think that's awesome. I mean, I've been secretly playing games. Like my latest one was um, it's Everwing. Um, so because I met them at uh, Silicon Valley Comic Con last year, and I won something from them, and um, you know it's super super awesome and it's fun. So I'm basically looking forward to you know seeing what the company is doing and will do. Um, and I hope to see it, you know, see the company make an impact in the blockchain community. Thanks. Thanks a lot. We will. <laughs> okay. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye-bye.